Hello viewers, welcome back to the Moose Mobile Auto Repair Channel and today I have a 2017 Toyota Corolla and it has a 1.8 liter engine and this particular Corolla is equipped with the K313 CVT transmission. CVT stands for a continuously variable transmission. Now this Corolla is approaching close to 96,000 kilometers and so now it's due for the CVT transmission service. So I'm using the Toyota CVT Fluid FE. I got this straight from the dealer. Um, I got approximately five quarts just in case if I needed more. I'm also going to be replacing the, the drain plug and the fill plug washers here. Uh, the part number for the drain plug is over here. 90430A0002. The larger washer here is the same part number except that the two is a three. So I will put the part numbers in the uh, description. This washer is just taped onto the plastic. So this comes separate from this one okay so we are going to pull off the the driver's side uh, wheel so the first thing we're gonna do now is to remove the trim clip here And you need to remove the two uh, 10 millimeter self top bolts. Get this uh, cover out of the way. And then now we have access to the fill plug here. So the fill plug is a, a 24 uh, millimeter. So I'm just using a half drive ratchet with a long ex extension. Uh, if you want, uh, you, you're also able to, to, to break this free with a wrench if you're working from underneath. I'm just going to break the break this free now. Probably going to try from underneath because I think that's easier without using the long ex extension. Now it's open. So I just uh, I opened up the fill plug, and here it is here, and then uh, we are going to change the, the washer here. So over here on where the, the transmission pan is, uh, this is a, a six millimeter hex. So I'm using an, uh, an Allen key or, or or a hex bit so this is a six uh, millimeter hex bit so I'm gonna use that to uh, crack this open 
make sure it's in all the way on some of the vehicles there may be some rust inside the hole so you, you may need to clean it out so we are going to drain the fluid Now you have to be careful that this is CVT fluid. This is not regular transmission fluid, although they look very similar. You may need to adjust the drain pan or if you're using a, a measuring container, you may have to adjust it. So now there is an overflow tube or the plastic stopper inside here. You're going to use the same six millimeter hex bit and you're going, going to insert it in here and remove the plastic uh, overflow tube. Be sure to bring the drain pan to catch the fluid because it's going to... <laughs> to leak out also the fluid is very hot I'm taking out the uh, the plastic overflow tube and it's is going to drain out the <laughs> the rest that's inside there So here's the stopper. So here's the, the overflow tube and it uses the same six uh, <laughs> millimeter hex it's the same as the one that's on the drain plug so this stopper is responsible for uh, keeping <laughs> the fluid level to to where it, it it needs to be so later after we fill this up we are going to check the the fluid level and so once the fluid level reaches at the very top at the tip of the overflow tube that means that that's where the proper level is. So anything that goes, any fluid that's ab above this tube is going is going to flow inside the hole here. So th <laughs> this will be the excess fluid. So as soon as it reaches here, you will see it's gonna come down a a trickle or a thin. Uh, a steady stream. I'll show you guys uh, later uh, uh, in the video. For now, uh, we are just going to finish the procedure here and, and fill the transmission up. So now the fluid is uh, all done draining. I'm going to, to reinsert the overflow tube inside here and uh, <laughs> tighten it up. You keep on, on tightening this up on, until it stops.
there's a torque <laughs> specification for this but it's not on <laughs> very tight we were just going to uh, 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 tighten up the stopper a, a tiny bit and for now we are just going to temporarily install this drain plug we are going to use the old gasket uh, for now because we are going going to check the fluid level and after we check it and and then we are going to re replace this as soon as the procedure is all done so for now we're going to temporarily replace the plug here and just tighten it up a tiny bit and we are going to fill the system up with the cvt fluid so i got roughly very close to two liters so we are going to put a little bit more than two liters, maybe two and a half or three, and then we are going to check the level uh, afterwards. So uh, I made myself a, a pump uh, some time ago. I wired, I wired it up and everything. So I'm going to be using this pump to, uh, to, to pump in the, the new fluid. It's uh, connected to the vehicle's uh, <laughs> battery. So I'm going to be pumping in roughly three quarts. I already have the hose uh, connected. Well, I made a gigantic mess because uh, the hose came out and I was not watching it. So you guys have to be careful if you're using a pump. So anyhow, I'm replacing the, uh, the old one with the new one, a new uh, gasket for the fill plug. I'm just going, going to wash it down a little bit to get rid of any dirt. So now I'm just going to install the plug here. And I, I will uh, uh, put the torque specifications on the screen uh, somewhere. I'm going to tighten this down and I'm going to wash everything down. And then we are going to, to check uh, the fluid level. So we're just going to... Uh, Tighten down the fill plug. So uh, I have a digital <laughs> leveler gauge. Uh, I need to get it close to level ground as possible. This is at 1.2 degrees, which is okay. Doesn't have to be exactly zero but it needs to be close. This is all right. It's not that big of a deal. If you're only one or two degrees off, that's fine. It's very close. So I'm, I, I'm happy with this. So now I'm going to get a scan tool and to have a look at, at the temperature. And we are going to go through the gears and then we are going to check the level. So I'm going through the scan tool here. Go to diagnostic. I have the car running now. So right now the transmission temperature is 141 Fahrenheit. We need to get it down 
between 95 and 113 in order to check the level. So we are gonna, going to let the vehicle cool down and, uh, and we are going to come back. So this vehicle has 90,307 kilometers. Uh, we are just going to go, th go through the gears first and then we are going to let the vehicle uh, uh, cool down afterwards. And then we are going to uh, check the level uh, once the temperature is <laughs> within the specified range. Now, if you're not sure and what kind of transmission you have on your Toyota vehicle, you can have a look at the VIN <laughs> placard on the driver's door jam area. And you'll see here, automatic transmission, it says K313. <laughs> so I'm still waiting for the temperature to drop as soon as it gets... Uh, below 113 then i'll be able to check the the fluid level now i'm using a, a scan tool to check the the fluid temperature uh, if you don't have a scan tool you may be able to use one of these uh, thermometer guns however they are not as accurate as the one that's on the scan tool because the one that's on the scan tool it's the computer is seeing the temperature from the sensor that's directly inside the transmission. So that one is way more accurate. I just tried this. This one is about around 10 Fahrenheit less than what it's saying on the scan tool. So you have to be careful because these uh, uh, infrared thermometer guns are not 100% accurate. So it's, it's a better idea to use the scan tool uh, uh, instead. There is another procedure in order to check the fluid temperature by using the uh, OBD2 DLC diagnostic link connector uh, port. So uh, you would need to jump two pins and you would see the the uh, the transmission selector flash and stuff like that you'll see like D flashing and stuff like that but I'm I'm not going to do that because I'm not a big fan of uh, jumping pins and and, uh, and playing around with wires because now if somehow you accidentally jump the wrong pins or something happens when you short something out, it's possible that that you, you can damage the computer or you can damage or fry other computers of the vehicle. So therefore, I'm not doing it that way. I'm just going to be using the high level scan tool in order to check the temperature that way because that is the correct procedure. So now we are at about 114 Fahrenheit, uh, so we're almost there. Uh, we probably want to get below 113 because as soon as I turn the vehicle on, the temperature will start to rise. So you always want to keep it between 95 and 113 as the vehicle is running and as you are checking the, uh, the fluid level. So now we're at, at 113. I'm just gonna wait until it drops a, a little bit more and then we are, are, are going to check it. So now we are going to check the level. We are gonna open up the drain plug. And now it's uh, draining out the excess fluid until it gets to a thin and steady stream and then that would mean we are at the correct uh, <laughs> fluid level. So it's almost done now. Until it gets to a thin stream and a, a trickle. 
and then it would mean that the level is okay. You know, it's getting to a trickle now. So now you want to close it up. You don't want to wait for too long until it only drips. You want to get a thin stream, a trickle. And then uh, you, you should be okay then. I'm going to put the torque spec on the screen for this. Uh, if you don't have a torque wrench, you can just tighten it up snug and then uh, you should be okay. So I'm just going to wash the area down. Uh, you should probably replace the gasket just before you, you are about to close the drain plug up because I'm trying to make a video I uh, I forgot to chain the gasket so that's why I had to take this out uh, twice and now let's say that that no fluid came out as you were checking uh, the level uh, so th that would mean you would need to add some more fluid then and if you don't have a pump you could also use a, a funnel that's like this and that has the the spout at the bottom or you can use a very long hose to connect to the funnel and put it like like up here beside the battery area and you you could just uh f f fill up the fluid uh using uh, gravity so i'm just going to top it up a tiny bit here just for demonstration uh, purposes so i'm just going to top it up a tiny bit You can just use the the gravity to uh, to fill up the uh, the fluid. So now you just need to, to re reinstall the covers and, th and then you should be uh, all good to go. And then uh, reinstall the wheel and, and then that's it. Go for a road test and just make sure that, that everything is okay. That's it for today. If you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, please don't forget to give it a like and please consider subscribing to my channel if you're not already a subscriber and I'll see you guys next time. Have a good day 
and take care.